Hello, um, I'm using a worksheet available from www.eclassroom.co.za's uh, website. Um, this is what the worksheet looks like. It is available f on this week's handout. Okay, it is named uh, Sharp Grade 10 Maths Worksheet Five Patterns, Relationships and Representations. Now, the reason why we are first doing a grade 10 worksheet is to just to quickly uh, recap what we did last year. All right, so the first question. Use the graph below to answer the following questions. All right, so here we have a graph. Um, let's zoom in a bit. It's a little bit small. Okay, even bigger. Say that's very good. Okay, so it says use the graph below to answer the question that follows. Here it says temperature degrees Celsius. This is the name of this axis. We can also put that heading here. Okay, this is the time in minutes. It can also be horizontal. Right. What kind of a relationship is represented by is represented by the graph? Okay, so the answer is the indirect proportion. Let's quickly recap: indirect proportion as one increases, so the time increases, the temperature will decrease. Okay, so that is an indirect proportion. Explain the relationship between time and temperature according to the graph. As time increased, the temperature decreased. We just uh, did it. What was the temperature at three minutes? So here it's one minute, two minutes, three minutes. And if you go up, 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 up to the graph, okay, so it's round about there, okay, there in the middle will be 90 degrees, okay. Um, so this should be around about 85, 86 degrees Celsius. Okay, and it says 85 degrees Celsius. Okay, question two. Remember, you first have to look at the questions before you start answering the questions. Match each description to the correct graph below. Right. Mr. Mbayu pulled his car out of the driveway and drove to work. There was some traffic close to his office. Okay, pulled his car out of the driveway, drove to work. Some traffic close to his office. Right, so this is distance from home and time. He put, pulled out of the driveway. Okay. The, the distance from home is naught. Okay, so here is very close to home. This is somebody that started driving, decreased his, his speed. Uh, no, sorry. Somebody that drove away from home, back to home. Spent time at home, go away from home again, stayed a distance from home. This might be out of the driveway, um, no, no. Okay. He pulled out of the driveway. Let's see. He drove and his distance from home decreased. Some traffic, a little bit of traffic. So the, this means that the fact that the graph is, the gradient is less steep means that the, he drove slower. And there he is at home. And this is somebody driving, driving away from home, uh, away from work, going to home or away from the shop. Okay, so let's go. I would think that this would be 3. Let's go to the memo. Yeah, I'm right. Well, we should hope so, eh? Right, the second one. The boy walked out of the shop, so he start away from home. Okay, so whenever, see this on the x-axis would be at home. Right, so there's home, home, home. There's home and there's home. Alright, because the distance from home is naught. 
Okay, so the boy walked out of the shop when he, alma, when he was almost home. He realized he had forgotten to buy milk for his mum. So he went back to the shop, bought milk and went back home again. Okay, so we want somebody that start away from home. So it's either this one or that one. Okay, so this is the boy. He walked home. Halfway he realized he'd forgotten something. He went back to the store. Store is the same distance from home. Went back home. I would think it's one. But let's quickly look at number four because that also starts away from home. Okay, so away from home. Go back home. Oh, go back to the store. Oh, no. That, there was no going back to the store. So it should be one. Oh, and lo and behold, it's one. Okay, and now... The next one. Dandy was on her way to a birthday party. Okay, sorry, let's scroll till we can see most of the graphs. Dandy was on her way to a birthday party. When she was almost at the party, she noticed that she didn't have the gift with her. She ran back home to fetch it and she had to look for the gift. So when she found it, she ran all the way to the party. Okay, so which two start at home? It was these two. And remember, this was the guy driving away, slowing down in traffic, spending time at work. This is a girl. Look at that question, uh, graph two. She was at home, go to the party. Halfway there, she realized there was no the gift was at home. Got home, looked for the gift, ran to the party. So Tandy should be num uh, C should be two. Ha! And it's right! And the last one. Cindy was walking home from the shop. Okay, let's see. Look at all four of those graphs. Cindy was walking home from the shop when she saw a friend that she hadn't seen in a long time. They stopped to chat and then she continued her journey at ho uh, to on her journey home. Right, so now these two start away from home. She walked from the store, saw a friend, they s chatted for a while, she go back home. All right, she went back home. So question D is four. Right, let's go to question number three. Use the graph and table below to answer the following questions. Let's see if we can do the whole one. Okay, it only goes up to E. Sorry for that. Use a graph to answer the following question. So here we have number of books, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 20, and gap 50. The cost per book, 250, 248, 246, gap 242, gap 2, 1, 2, 1, 192, and 152. The cost per book, down, 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 and the number of books. Right, remember this can be skewed and placed over here and that words were wo those words there can be s placed over here all right so use the graph to fill in the missing values on the table Quit number four go up 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 and across Well, for four books, looking at the table, it should be 244. <laughs> for 10 books, let's zoom in a bit, see if we can see it clearer. I think a little bit more, a little bit more. Okay. So for 10 books, if we go... Let's see, this is 120 to 240. So if we go directly across, I th would think 228. Um, 228 is that first one. Oh, then sorry, it's 244 and then 228 and then at 192. Hmm. 
which is around about here, it's 192. I think it's there. Can there be 25 books? Please go to the answer. Sorry, I might. The, it's printed now. Uh, it's the, um, too small on the screen for me to see. Okay, so it's 244, 232, and 30 books. So it's 244, 10 books. A ruler would be useful, yes. Yeah, I don't have a ruler now. 223 is 10 books, 232, sorry, 232, and 30 books is 192. Calculate the equation of the straight line graph. Okay, so it, we, it, do you see that here it's easy because it goes minus 2, minus 2, minus 2. So there would be a minus 2n. Um, and I don't know if you remember from last year's work, but if you start with minus 2n, it's a minus 2 table. So it's minus 2 times 1 is minus 2, minus 2 times 2 is minus 4. So um, what do we start with? Ach, oh, now it's also easy. Notebooks. Oh. Um, what if I take from what number? No. If I minus 2 from a number, the answer should be 250. Okay? And 252 minus 2 gives me 250. So the equation is 252 minus 2 times the number of books. And now if you would extend this graph, it starts at 252. Okay? But again with a ruler. Sorry that I do not have a ruler yet. Um, it's not necessary to do this whole remember that we did this we did in grade uh, 9 with a gradient but it's not necessary so we start with 252 and we minus 2 times the amount of books each time so minus 2n because it decreases with 2 that's why the minus 2n equation of number pattern what is the cost per book if you purchase 25 books Go up to the graph and across. Oh, it's around about 200 rand. Um, but or you can say 252 minus 50 is 202 rand. Okay, so now it's easier to use the equation. So 52 times 25 is 50. If you take 50 away from 252, you get 202 rand. So cost per book if you purchase 25 books is 202 rand. Explain the relationship between the number of books and the cost per books. The more books you buy, the less you will pay per book. So each book costs less if you buy more books. As the number of books purchased increases, the number of cost per book decreases. Okay, that's perfect. And what is this kind of proportion called? It's called an indirect proportion. Question number four. Jane and Jenny left at 5 to go to Durban. Okay, so there's Durban. The graph below shows the time they took and the distance they travel. Use the graph to answer the questions that follow. Right. Question number 1. Between which two points did Jenny drive the slowest? Okay, so now when a graph has got the lowest gradient when it's not that steep it means that the progression is slowest Now, if you take a ruler and you would put it here and you would just move it to that point you'll see that that is less steep so let's look between Val Valise and Harry Smith okay steep again okay now the, they d uh, didn't um, they didn't move here so they stayed over in Lady Smith a bit and now that's quite steep, it's quite steep again. So between Valise and Harry Smith. Between Valise and Harry Smith or point A and B. Okay, decrease in size to look at the next question. In which town did Jane and Jenny stop to have breakfast? Give a reason for your answer. They stopped over in Lady Smith because an hour passed but they didn't move at all. 
Right, they stopped in Lady Smith. You can see the graph is flat, so no distance was gained between points C and D when they were in Lady Smith. Okay, how far is Peter Marisburg from Phillies? Okay, so it's about 120 kilometers from home, and Peter Marisburg is about five, 470. So you would go 470. Now here a variety of answers would be correct because the, the scale is, is quite big. Okay, so let's say 470 minus 120. 470 minus 120 is 350 kilometers. Okay, let's see what it. Okay, so now the, the because the the person that set up this uh, exercise, um, they um, knew the exact distance, so they said 475 minus 170 is 358. But here they, they it's a bit, they, they say 348 to 368 kilometers acceptable. So if you have a, a scale that's not that um, easy to read because there's not a lot of smaller b sections. They will always, um, on the memo, say between this and that, the answer is acceptable. Okay, so just do your best. Um, question D At what time did Jane and Jenny arrive in Durban? Um, okay, so now they traveled seven hours and 45 minutes to Durban. They left at 5. So it's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that's 12, 45. That's my answer. They arrived at 12, 45. Okay, so at 12, 40 and between 12, 35 and 12, 45 would be acceptable. So I'm right at the top extreme. Okay, and the last one. Calculate the average speed of Jane and Jenny's trip. So what you would do, average speed is total distance divided by total time. Okay, so Durban is round about 560 away from home divided by um, 7 hours and remember 45 minutes is three quarters of an hour so let's look here distance is seven hour 40 minutes okay now 40 minutes is two-thirds of an hour because you go 40 divided by 60 and 40 over 60 simplifies to 2 over 3 so you take the total distance which is 553 or you take your distance that you read off the graph the Divided by 7 and 2 thirds, and that gives you 72,13 kilometers per hour. Okay, great question. And then last one, question number 5. Okay, and the last question is question 5. The graph below shows how a runner named John trains for a race. Use the graph to answer the question that follows. Right, between, okay, so let's quickly, this is the time axis and this is the distance axis. Now, because time and distance um, increase simultaneously this is a direct proportion but it's not okay so even though it's going doop 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 it's still increasing and increasing so the direct proportion between which two points does John run the fastest remember somebody runs the fastest when the graph is the steepest and I would think it's between B and C by the looks of it hey let's go to the memo um not at the right place. Between F and G is the highest gradient. Let's quickly look at the graph again. Sorry, between F and G. Hmm. B and C looks a little bit steeper than F and G. Okay, what is gra uh, John doing between points D and E? N uh, time passed, so two minutes passed, 
um, but no distance. So I think he was resting, or he was uh, some is resting or not moving. So he's maybe he has an injury or something. John decides that he needs to walk part of the way as part of his training. Between which two points did he do this? Walked. I think there's a walking might be between G and H. That's quite slow. Um, yeah, I think that's the flat part between G and H. Um, e and F can also be walking, but G and H, H and I, J and K, K L and M might be walking. Let's look at the results. Between H and I, that's the lowest gradient. But G and H is also quite flat. So when the gradient is l is flat, then um, then it means it was uh, progress uh, progression was slower. How far does John run? Okay, from A to M, two thousand seven hundred and fifty meters. 2750 meters and then what is his uh, speed between A and B see this is uh, probably sorry this is probably the best way to calculate whether he was going slow as to work out the speed over a pass so that's 250 in four minutes so 250 meters in two minutes time um, 250 divided by four is 62,5 meters per minute. You can just say the distance was 250 divided by 4. Okay. 250 by 62,5. How long did John take to run 2,000 meters? So there it is, 2,000 meters. And it is 24 minutes. Okay. Um, and this is the end of the worksheet. Um, remember, you can go and get the worksheets from www.eclassroom.co.za or right here on Twin Able's website. Thank you very much.